I sent Igor off for some more target practice. So while he's gone, let's talk about these targets, the oscillators. At first glance, they look pretty much alike, but you'll be surprised how many different functions are hidden beneath the faceplate. Let's look at oscillator one. It's got all of your basic waveforms. So let's look at the first one here, the sine wave. Sine waves sound really smooth. That's because they have no harmonics. They are just a fundamental frequency. Let's take a look. Waveforms that sound smooth will often look smooth too. They won't have any sharp angles. It's the sharp angles that produce buzzy, high-frequency harmonics. Now, I would use sine waves to produce flute-type sounds, soft sounds, stuff without a lot of buzz. If you need some buzz, let's move down here to the square wave. Square waves are called square waves because they look square. They contain harmonics. In fact, they contain only the odd high harmonics, one, three, five, seven, etc. In a square wave, 50% of its cycle is positive and the other 50% is negative, and that makes up a full cycle. Because it's missing all of the even harmonics, a square wave is often characterized as having kind of a hollow sound. Let's look at another type of wave called a pulse wave. It's a relative of the square wave. It sounds like a square wave, but with some of its higher frequencies emphasized. As you change the width of the pulse, the waveform takes on different sonic characteristics. Now, a pulse wave is different than a square wave because either the positive or negative portion of the wave has to be less than 50% of the waveform cycle. As you change or modulate that pulse width, different odd harmonics are emphasized. The next wave we're going to look at is the sawtooth wave. A sawtooth wave looks like a sawtooth, and it's a very buzzy waveform. That buzz is created by its highly pointed angles. It contains all harmonics, even and odd, up through the reproducible frequency spectrum. Here's another wave. This is called a triangle wave. It sounds kind of like a sine wave, but it kind of sounds like a dirty sine wave. You can see why it gets its name. It looks like a bunch of triangles. And notice that the angle, though pointed, isn't real sharp. That's what gives it a smoother sound, unlike its friend, the sawtooth wave. Sawtooth waves, because they're so harmonically rich, are great for creating bright pads and leads, and especially give you lots of opportunity for filtration. A triangle wave doesn't give you those high harmonics, so there wouldn't be a whole lot to filter out of them. Let's listen to the waveforms. You can also grab and turn the knob. Notice that there's sine waves at the top and bottom. The one at the top has some special qualities that we'll talk about later. The one at the bottom is actually one of 100 different waveforms that we can choose between just by control clicking on it. Let's check out this one. And let's take a look at it because you'll see it's pretty complex. These digi waveforms give us the opportunity to create all kinds of amazing timbres. You can also click and drag on the name to scan through them all. And if you can scan through them, you know darn well we can use a modulator to modulate through them too. Those digi waveforms are really powerful. I'll give you some cool stuff to do with them later, but let's talk about tuning. All of the oscillators share the same kind of tuning controls. You can grab the knob or grab the numerical input 
and move it by steps, or you can grab the sense numerical input and move it by sense. This gives you very accurate fine tuning capabilities. You can also double click on any of the numerical inputs and input a number from your alphanumeric keyboard. Here's one of my favorite features. When you turn the oscillator off, this membrane comes across the oscillator display to lock it. It really reminds me of Igor's nictitating membrane. Hey, next we'll look at the waves of oscillator 2 and 3.